Hey, what's up everybody? Eternal Fire here, and today I just want to talk about the fact that patch 7.1 in World of Warcraft is coming out a lot sooner than I think a lot of us thought it was going to. It's going to be hitting us on October 25th, and we're going to be getting a new raid already, which is kind of crazy because I feel like we just got into Emerald Nightmare. Um, we're going to be getting a new five-man dungeon, Karazhan, which used to be a 10-man raid, which is awesome. Uh, the new raid is going to be Trials of Valor, where we're going to go head-to-head -head with Odin, Gwarm, and Helia, so it's going to be like a three-boss uh, raid, which is kind of cool, you know, so I think people are definitely going to be uh, still doing Emerald Nightmare for gear, and people are also going to be able to do, you know, Trials of Valor, which is cool, because you're going to be able to have more than one raid, and uh, this patch came out quick, it seems like it has a lot of content, so it's got the dungeon, it's got the new raid, um, and there's also some new quests and a lot of, you know, a lot of new world content as well. Um, some of the things I wanted to touch on for me being a warrior guy, it sounds like they're going to be working with Fury Warriors much more, trying to improve them, reduce the amount of damage that they take passively, and maybe even buff their damage some more. So we're going to see. They didn't really uh, get too specific. Ian Hazakosis is now the new director of World of Warcraft. Um, so that's pretty cool. I feel like he's really, uh, really pro us, pro positive game, you know, changes things very carefully is not, he, he seems very, uh, very wise. I'll just leave it at that. Um, Another thing, they're bringing the action cam back, which for me is really cool because I like questing and just being out in the world, leveling all stuff like that. So, you know, it just gives more of an immersive feel. I like doing old school content. So, you know, that also gives it a different feel just going into, you know, say ICC to farm your uh, invincible mount. You can pop it into uh, your action cam and get a little bit more enjoyment out of, you know, grinding the same dungeon you've done 257 times so you know that's that's pretty cool they're gonna still be working on class balances uh what they said is they're working on class balances before um patch 7.1 hits and they'll also still be working on them after 7.1 so you know they're they're tuning everything the best they can and they're going to try and just keep working on things the only thing they want to be careful for and this is what i like about ian is they don't want to just simply okay well fire mages are way too overpowered you know according to the the logs online because that's what everybody's playing and not frost um and then they make frost so blatantly overpowered because nobody's playing it that now everybody has to abandon their artifact weapon for fire and now level their artifact weapon for frost and everybody is you know teed off because you know they spent all this time putting artifact points into their fire mage and now their fire mage spec is basically useless but the nice thing about it is is also with your artifact knowledge is that, you know, uh, the further you get in your artifact knowledge, the easier it will be to catch up, you know, with your alt specs for that class. So, you know, that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, they're going to, you know, continue to do class tuning, which I think is really cool. Um, and then what else? They kind of talked about secondary stats. They weren't really happy with the way secondary and primary stats came into play. Um, it seems like secondary stats are way more important than your primary stats, which, you know, you would think they should be secondary, but you know, whatever they're going to continue to try and work on that and tweak that. Uh, Asmund gold had a really good point that, you know, why don't you just bring reforging back? You know, you might not get a piece of gear with all your ideal stats, but at least you can reforge something, you know? And I thought that was, uh, you know, a really good point, you know, we had that. So say you didn't get that piece of gear with ideal stats, but it was a better item level. You could just reforge and then, you know, at least get some more benefit out of that piece of gear. But, you know, we'll see, we'll see if they do anything with that or just, you know, revamp it all together. We'll see. Another thing is the crafting costs. How many of you guys are doing, uh, dungeons with flasks? Yeah, I know they're super expensive. Um, one of the things they said, you know, the, the, I think the root cause of probably this problem is that in Warlords of Draenor, we all had our own herb garden and our own, you know, mining, uh, cave that we could just get all our materials from. And we really didn't need gathering professions. That was more of a waste of time than anything for the most part. So, you know, you had a lot of players abandoning their gathering professions and we had two crafting professions. Well, guess what? Legion hit and we don't have that herb garden anymore so you know a lot of us are like well how the heck am i gonna you know gather this stuff i have you know blacksmithing and engineering but so you know a lot of people are going to having one crafting profession one gathering profession which i think blizzard you know that's what they want so 
Uh, to an extent, I think people will become more self-sufficient, but also with 7.1, you have the new blood of Sargeras's, which we've all been, you know, just accumulating in our banks. You know, some of us have hundreds of them. Um, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be a big dump on the market when people just start using those blood of Sargeras. People are going to sell them. People are going to use them to craft their own stuff. So I think over time, the price will definitely go down in the cost of materials, but they did stress that they don't want things to be as easily, you know, accessible and usable. And they don't want things to be as cheap as they were in Warlords of Draenor, where you could go to the auction house and buy a, um, a flask for, you know, 30 gold. Um, they don't necessarily want you to be able to use pots and flasks on every single pole, on every single, you know, uh, encounter. You know, they want you to think about them and use them when they're more beneficial. You know, when would this really benefit me to use? You know, when could I really get the most use out of it versus just merely popping, you know, a potion every time, you know, you pull trash and you have that, you know, boss encounter, whatever. So, you know, that's kind of an interesting way of looking at it. So, um, Another thing I really liked what they said uh, regarding prop warriors, which you know you know I cover. Um, where is? Let me find it. I liked what they said right here. It says uh, protection warriors. Some of the rage from damage taken was a throwback to the old school warrior days. Getting punched makes you angry, and you use that anger to fuel your tanking abilities. Now I think that's really cool. You know they did do that where you know taking damage directly helps you uh build rage and it kind of scales as the difficulty you go through so you know if you're doing solo content or heroics you might have more of a tr you know work a little bit harder to maintain the rage that you're building or you could just power pull you know everything just saying um you might have to be a little more careful but you know you go to a higher end where you're going to be taking much larger hits and those hits you know that the damage you take you're going to get a lot more rage so you know that go, kind of goes back into another whole thing and I won't get into it because I, I kind of go mental over it. But, uh, you know, I think it's really cool. I think we're going to have two raids close together. I think people are going to be, you know, still in Emerald Nightmare. I think people are, you know, going to obviously be in Trials of Valor. People are going to be enjoying Karazhan because Karazhan was always an awesome place. I think Ian has a coast. This has been doing a great job. And honestly, those are just some of the changes that are coming with 7.1. I think there's a ton of content coming out. You know, it doesn't feel empty like 6.1 did where it's like, hey, guys, you got a uh, you got a camera that you can take selfies with. Yay. So anyway, guys, those are some of my thoughts. Those are the things I'm excited about. Uh, did I even mention legendaries? I don't think I mentioned legendaries. Holy crap. So legendaries, uh, they basically said that there is some sort of bad luck protection. Um, you know, you can, you can, if you work at it long enough, you will get a legendary, but some people are just luckier than others because truly it is random. So the, the more you work at it, it's not a time-based thing, but the more you work at it, the, the higher your chance of getting a legendary will be. So keep doing those emissary quests, keep doing those heroics and mythics and mythic plus dungeons, keep doing those raids. Eventually you will get a legendary. I haven't gotten mine yet and I'm seriously still waiting for it. So I'm looking forward to getting it. I hope it's a good one, not a crappy one. And they did say that they're going to be trying to fix some of the legendaries that are definitely subpar. So, you know, we'll see what that has to, uh, has to come in the future. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did leave a like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.